Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. I'm basically an Egyptologist. I mean, that's what I do. I work in Egypt. And all Egyptologists have specialties, and mine is mummies, with what's called paleopathology. We're interested in diseases in the ancient world. Mummies are kind of like little encyclopedias. If you know how to read them, you can find out a lot. Well, I'm going to talk about Egyptomania, why the world is fascinated with ancient Egypt. So I have a book called Egyptomania, but the talk isn't really about the book. It's even broader. It's about all kinds of things relating to our interest in ancient Egypt. What does the Statue of Liberty have to do with Egyptomania? What people don't know is that the Statue of Liberty was originally intended for Egypt. It was originally intended for the opening of the Suez Canal in 1869, and the Egyptian government went bankrupt and couldn't afford it. So the sculptor, Bartholdi, got the idea, let's sell it to France to give to America as a gift. And that's how we got the Statue of Liberty. It was originally intended to be called Egypt Enlightening Asia. And it was a peasant woman holding a lantern above her head. I also did some TV, yes, I, I, I was a, uh, the host on the Learning Channel's series about my research called Mummy Detective. I did one called uh, Unwrap the Mysterious World of Mummies, and then there was a six-part series called uh, The Great Egyptians, which were kind of bios of the great pharaohs. This is, on the right we have Howard Carter, and in 1922 they found Tutankhamun's tomb, the greatest archaeological discovery of all time. I was writing a book about mummies and I realized that people didn't really know how they mummified anybody. And I was curious about it, so I decided to do an actual mummification. So I took a cadaver, a human cadaver, and I mummified it in the ancient Egyptian way to see how they got the brain out through the nose. Everybody always said that the way they removed the brain through the nose was by a little iron hook. You put it in, and you pull the brain out a little piece at a time, kind of like a coat hanger thing with a hook at the end, and you keep doing it, and the brain comes out. We tried it. It does not come out that way. You cannot get a brain out that way. We finally figured out how the ancient Egyptians did do it. And this explains why nobody's ever found an ancient Egyptian brain in a tomb, in a jar or anything. They took a little tool and put it through the nose, breaking through what's called a cribriform plate into the cranium. And they turned it around and around like a kitchen whisk. And they liquefied the brain. And then you turn the cadaver upside down and the brain runs out through the nose. That's how they did it. So there's nothing to save. You know, you've got what looks like a strawberry milkshake, basically. So there was nothing to save. One of the things we figured out also about mummification was, you know, they used a salt called natron. It's found in Egypt naturally, and it's really basically baking soda and table salt. And it covered the body with it to dehydrate it, because that's the whole idea of mummification. So I was wondering, how much natron do you need for a mummification, right? The answer is about 500 pounds. One of the hardest parts of my research was bringing 500 pounds of an unidentified white powder through JFK. Um, National Geographic was doing a uh, documentary about my mummification, and fortunately they had all this camera gear, silver boxes, and I just put it on with their stuff and it went through, so I was lucky that way. But, so we learned lots about by doing a mummification. With Paris and London getting obelisks, New York had to have its obelisk. All along the way, I've been collecting sort of anecdotes and ideas about why people are fascinated with Egypt. And I've come up with about three or four things that get people. One is mummies, I think. I think it's the quest for immortality. You know, you look at a mummy, and he's 3,000 years old, but he's a recognizable human being. It's almost as if the Egyptians pulled it off, as if they achieved immortality, and I think we envy that. In Egypt, we find more fabulous things than any other civilization. We find the furniture, we find the, the, the gold, we find the jewelry, we find everything. So I think part of it that fascinates people is also this aspect of, we know so much about their civilization. We've got all the treasure, we can see it all, so you can sort of identify with ancient Egyptians. The other is these wonderful hieroglyphs. You know, they're so graphic and they're so mysterious. They look so sexy, you know? And that's what I've been sort of pulling together for this book, Egyptomania, for 30 years.